Hey guys, my name is Celeste and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you through the Bible and sharing a message on how to forgive. I post a new video every James 4.15, meaning whenever the Lord wills, so definitely make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified whenever the Lord puts a video idea on my heart for me to share with you. So if you want to follow along with today's message, you can feel free to get your Bible. I will be reading the NIV version. So let's start by reading Matthew 6 from verse 14. It says, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your father will not forgive your sins. So right off the bat, we're starting with a pretty harsh scripture. But the reason why I wanted to start with the scripture is just to show the significance of forgiveness. Being an unforgiving person as a believer is kind of hypocritical, considering the fact that the whole belief of Christianity is that we are all sinful and in need of a savior and God has so graciously given us the opportunity to be born again and live for him so that despite our life of sin, we can still spend eternity with him in heaven. So it's hypocritical for a Christian to be unforgiving because God has so graciously forgiven us. So we know that it's important to forgive, but the question is how can we forgive? Because people in this world are evil and they'll do evil things with evil intentions and they'll hurt us. So the question is how can we learn to forgive in the way that God has so graciously forgiven us? I'm going to break down for you one of my favorite stories in the Bible of forgiveness and that is Joseph's story. So you can turn your Bible to Genesis chapter 50, but before I turn there, I want to explain to you some background of the story. So Joseph had many brothers. They all shared the same father, but a lot of them had different mothers. Joseph's mother was Rachel and he only had one other sibling from that mother. Joseph's father was in love with his mother, Rachel, which resulted in Joseph being his favorite child. And Joseph's other brothers were jealous of Joseph for being the favorite. One night, Joseph had a dream of all his other brothers and even his father bowing down to him. And he shared that dream with his siblings, resulting in them being being even more jealous of him. I highly recommend that you read this whole story for yourself because it is so good. But to sum it up, Joseph's brothers ended up selling him into slavery due to that jealousy. And from there, Joseph ended up working for someone named Potiphar and Potiphar's wife had a crush on Joseph, even though she was married. And she tried to get Joseph to sleep with her, but Joseph said, I will not sin against the Lord by, by sleeping with you because you're married. And Potiphar's wife took that rejection so hard that she ended up lying, saying that Joseph tried to sleep with her, which obviously resulted in Potiphar getting upset. And Joseph ended up then going to prison. And in prison, Joseph ended up helping someone out by interpreting their dream. And Joseph told that person, hey, you know, when you get out of here, try to help get me out too. But when that person and ended up getting out of prison, they forgot about Joseph for years until they finally remembered him because there was a need for Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, to have his dream interpreted and the person in prison remembered that Joseph could interpret dreams. And that resulted in Joseph finally getting out of prison and he ended up being equal to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, because Joseph was so highly needed there. And they used Joseph to help rule Egypt and make sure that they were doing it in the godly manner that God wanted it to be done. Because God had informed Joseph that the meaning of the dream was that there was going to be a famine happening. And so it was really important for them to store up food in this season of life so that when the famine came, they were still able to have food to eat. So again, I definitely recommend that you read the story for yourself so you can get all the good details, but that is the summary. So now let's turn our Bibles to Genesis 50 from verse 19 to see how Joseph dealt with his brothers after all it is that they had done to him. Before I read verse 19, I actually wanna read verse 15. It says, when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? And then in verse 19, it says, but Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. I really want to break down Joseph's response to his brothers. Notice this. Notice how Joseph never says to his brothers, it's okay, what you did to me was okay. I don't know if anyone else does this, but I realized for me that whenever someone says I'm sorry, my response automatically is just, it's okay. Like I always, I don't know why, I just feel like the correct response to I'm sorry is it's okay. But I want you to know that forgiving someone is not justifying what it is that they've done. It's not saying, oh, it's okay. All forgiveness is, 
is letting go. Let's really break this down. First, he says, don't be afraid. And then he says, am I in the place of God? Scripture makes it very clear that vengeance is the Lord's. We are not in the place of God. We are not in a place to be able to dictate the proper punishment to be dealt to someone who wrongs us. God is our judge. We are not in a place to be judging other people and say, this is your punishment. We are not in a place to hand out punishments. And when you keep reading, Joseph said, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. The reason why Joseph was able to forgive was because he saw God's hand in the matter. He wasn't looking at the situation alone, but he was able to take a step back and look at God's hand in the situation. Yes, what Joseph's brothers did was not okay. Yes, what they did was evil, but because God's hand was a part of the matter, he used their evil to bring about good so that Joseph's dream could come to pass. Joseph's brothers did end up bowing down before him because Joseph was put in a high place equal to the king of Egypt. And Joseph ended up saving lives because he made it over to Egypt, because he was there with Pharaoh. He was able to store up food in the fruitful season so that they would still have food to eat in the midst of the famine. He saved people's lives. It's because he went over to Egypt that he was able to have such a great impact on the people so that they could eat in the season of the famine. The Bible says that those who walk according to the spirit keep their minds focused on the things of the spirit. But those who walk according to the flesh keep their minds focused on the things of the flesh. That right there is the difference between believers and non-believers. When you walk in accordance with the spirit in harmony with the word of God, you see things from a biblical point of view. You're not just looking at the situation itself, but you're able to see God's hand in the situation, his hand in the matter. This is why scripture says walk by faith and not by sight. Faith is a spiritual thing. So if you are struggling with unforgiveness, I wanna encourage you to see God's hand in the situation because the truth of the matter is God will use our situations, our hardships, our circumstances to bring about our blessings. This is a test and that's why in James it says count it as joy when you face tests and trials of many kinds because the testing of your faith produces perseverance. When our faith is tested, it is an opportunity for our faith to grow. And the more our faith grows, the more we basically grow in heavenly currency. Because if you want to receive great things from God, you need to have great faith. With great faith, you can do great things with God. Remember, Jesus said that you can move a whole mountain with just having the faith of a mustard seed. If we want to receive great things from God, whether it's being able to heal or perform miracles, or maybe you want a financial blessing or you want a home, whatever it is that you want from God, you can receive and do great things with him, but you need to have great faith. And the only way you could do that is to walk by faith, not by sight. Walk in accordance with the things of the spirit. Keep the right focus. This is the time for you to have the proper focus. Joseph was able to forgive because he had the right focus. He wasn't looking at the action itself, but he was able to see God's hand in the situation. And that is the key to being able to forgive. You need to not just look at the wrong that someone had done to you, but take a step back and look at it from a spiritual point of view. This is not just someone wronging you. This is a trial. It is an opportunity for you to grow spiritually and grow your faith so that you can do great things with God. When you look at your situation, someone wronging you from a natural perspective, then you feel like you need to repay wrongdoing with wrongdoing. You're looking at the action alone and you don't get to see God's hand a part of it. You don't see that this is actually a test, something that God has allowed to happen to you to grow you. Remember that God chooses what we go through, but we choose how we go through it. I'm gonna turn my Bible to 2 Timothy from verse 20, but this time I'm actually gonna bring out my ESV Bible because I wanna read it in this version. Okay, so this is 2 Timothy 2 from verse 20. And it says, now in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honorable use, some for dishonorable. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, 
useful to the master of the house, ready for every good work. This scripture tells us that there are two different types of vessels. Some people are vessels of honorable use and some people are vessels of dishonorable use. And it says right here, therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use. That right there is us. At one point when we were living a life of sin, we were dishonorable vessels. But once we clean ourselves and we are born again and we repent, turn away from sin, we become honorable vessels. And it says then once we're honorable vessels, we're set apart as holy and useful to the master of the house. Then we are useful to God to do good work. So in that same way, how we are vessels now of honorable use, useful to God to do good work, there are also people who are vessels used by Satan to bring about his evil deeds. God will allow Satan to use people to bring about his evil works. He'll let Satan go ahead and do that, but God will use that evil to bring about good. That's what happened with Joseph. Going back to the verse in Genesis 50 from my NIV Bible, again, Joseph said, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. And then he said to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So the key to being able to forgive someone is to see God's hand in the situation. Because as believers, we're to walk by faith in God alone, faith in who he is, faith in his ability to do what he promised, rather than getting thrown off by what we see on the outside. Now I'm gonna turn my NIV Bible to Romans 12 verse 19. It says, do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. What you need to understand is that repaying evil with evil hurts you more than it hurts the other person. Because like I said, you can do great things with God when you have great faith, but faith comes from our heart. And in order to do great things with God, we need to have a free heart, a free spirit. And we don't have a free heart when our heart is filled with evil. When someone wrongs us and we choose to entertain that evil, we are building up evil in our heart and entertaining sin in our hearts. And scripture says everything we do flows from the heart. So we can't do great things with God if our hearts are filled with evil. When you are walking according to the spirit, living in harmony with God's word, your focus is on God. When someone wrongs you, it is a test, okay? This person is a vessel. They're being used to bring about evil works. This is the opportunity for you to either increase and grow closer to God or for you to stay in the natural. So when you're walking according to the spirit and someone bad, someone does something wrong to you, you can either keep walking or turn around. But when you turn around, you're getting farther away from God. And that reminds me of the story of the woman who turns into a pillar of salt. You know, God said, don't turn back. And she was running and she turned back and turned into a pillar of salt. We are not supposed to turn back. Keep your focus on God and keep walking the life he calls us to live. We should never take a break in living for God. Taking a break and operating in faith is taking a break in Jesus. We are called to walk by faith, not by what we see. And when we let what we see dictate our emotions and the words we speak, and we let it get to us, we fail the test to grow our faith so we can do great things with God. Like Joseph said, are we in the place of God? We are not in the place to give someone the proper punishment in order to repay them for what it is they've done to us. God will deal with that person. You need to have faith in God again that he will deal with that person accordingly. I wanna remind you to see past the person and look at the spirit behind the person. When people wrong you, you may see a person on the outside doing an evil act, but remember that they're just a vessel. In the same way we are vessels used by God to do good work, there are people used by Satan to bring about evil works. And the thing is, they may not even know that they're being used by the enemy. And this is why it is so important not to pray against people, but pray against the spirit behind the person that is leading them to do these evil actions. Continue to pray for the people who wrong you so that they can become honorable vessels and know God and grow in love of who he is the same way we now know him. 
And again, I want you to remember that forgiving someone, it doesn't mean that you're saying that what they did was okay, but forgiving is just letting go, letting go of the grudge, letting go of the opportunity to entertain the evil that they're doing to you, letting go of trying to come up with a plan as to how to get them back because we're not in the place of God. Our goal is to walk by faith and keep our focus on Jesus. We have assignments. We should be on assignment as believers. We are coworkers in God's service. We're servants of God. Our focus should be to go to God and figure out, okay, Lord, what is it that you want me to do? What is my assignment so I can serve you well? We have far greater things, honestly, to be doing than just to be entertaining people whose main focus is just in the flesh. Because we as believers, our focus is on the things of the spirit. Our focus is on God. And I want you to notice that it's because Joseph kept his focus on God, even during the hardship and even during the trials, he was able to do God's great work and save people's lives by feeding them in the time of the family. So I encourage you, no matter what your situation is, no matter what you're walking through, seek God, go to him in prayer and try to find his hand and seek understanding of his mind, his thought process, what he has to say in the matter, because he can give us more spiritual understanding. And even if we don't get it right away, I guarantee you, eventually you'll understand why that thing had to happen in order for the blessing that you experienced to have to happen. So the key to letting go is two things. One, recognizing that that person is just a vessel. And two, remembering that God allows these things to happen to us for a reason to bring about a blessing. So as believers, our goal should be to learn to submit to what God allows to happen to us so that we do not interfere with his perfect plan because even in the hardships, there is a purpose as to why he's taking you through what it is you're going through. And remember, with great faith, you can do great things with God. So I highly recommend you watch this video right here on how to increase your faith. Trust me, it will be a game changer because I walk you through how to biblically grow your faith. I love you guys and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.